Joining us right now is Josh Rosner. He's the managing director for Graham Fisher & Co. And, and Josh, good morning. It's been a while since we've hey. talked to you. It is. How are you? Good. Um, what do you think of what happened this weekend? Is this a situation that is good news as the market's reading it right now, not only for the bank, but also for other regional banks? Does this uh, kind of last? Is it something that stems some of the concerns longer term? I think I think it is good news. I think it doesn't really address the fundamental problem here, which is, you know, the rate hikes have actually ended up with uh, securities portfolios at the banks being upside down. Um, and while I think the Fed program, which I don't agree with lending against uh, against these assets at par, but I think that it's a setup for the longer term problem, which is we haven't even seen the problems begin to work their way through the loan books. And that's probably 12 months out, 16 months out, as we end up seeing a lot of the 36, 48 month commercial and industrial and commercial real estate loans start to reprice. OK, explain that. So we are seeing the problem with hold for maturity just on things like treasuries. You're right. Treasury. But this is the security portfolio, but it's not really the loan books themselves at this point. And so the less liquid assets are at some point going to end up having to get marked as well, probably to market. This program only lasts a year, which is my, my big concern with the Fed liquidity program, is that if you're lending against assets at par rather than against mark to market, at some point you're still going to have to true up when that, when that, uh, that program ends. And what, we haven't really begun to think about that. What should they be doing? Should they be lending I at think, a 10% haircut and kind of no, gradually working lend, their way down? I think you lend at market and you use a stick rather than just give all carrots and force the banks to either uh, raise capital, raise deposits, um, suspend buybacks and dividends, um, shrink their book. I think that what we're really doing is an extend and pretend without addressing the fundamental problems. And, and by the way, these are fundamental problems of a fractional reserve system, right, where deposits are short term, the loans are long term. Um, and the more leverage you have, the more problems you have. And why, I think why did so many banks get in a problem with this? Why why is it a situation that everybody was allowed to just avoid? That's a this? good question. That's a good question. Because frankly, this whole no one could see it is actually false. If you look at the call reports, it was readily apparent you've got, you know, several hundred banks here. I think that the problem isn't even that they were upside down, it's that they don't have enough cash on hand. And in some cases, they've got le very lumpy deposit bases. And I think that's really where the bigger problem is. So I don't know that you solve for that by calling for, you know, full in full deposit insurance on all depositors, because at the end of the day, if you're insuring the deposits, you're ultimately insuring the assets as well. And that is a problem that probably would not make its way through Congress anyway, which you would need Absolutely. congressional approval for. Absolutely. And, you know, it's ironic because you and I had talked uh, quite a lot during the Dodd-Frank era that we hadn't really resolved too big to fail. And we're seeing that again here. We created a handful of new government-sponsored entities where the deposits are flowing to rather than really making them indistinguishable from small and mid-sized banks. And so now we're talking about you know, extending that safety net, do we really want to end up looking like Germany or, or Switzerland, where our banks are ultimately sovereign liabilities?